What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to do this bat. It's pretty simple. It's not a very complex carving, even though, you know, I have all these markings all over it. That's just to help me see what pieces of wood to take off um, and to give a good explanation of everything to you. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is, well, you're gonna draw this bat on. So you can see that just right here. This is like your wings. You got like this little chest section right here. And then the bottom of it comes down like that. And then you got your ears. Um, I just go over, like go to the middle and then I go in between that. So just that's where the tip of your ear goes. Same thing on this side. So get to the middle and halfway on this side. Um, I draw a line back this way and that is so that you can see where that tip should be all the way back you know, when we're carving and we're carving in this way we're going to go all the way up to this line the whole way across so that's basically why i have these lines same thing for this one that's coming back this way and this way so you're going to be carving up through the piece here and then you know you're going to make that cut Drawing the same on both sides. These lines are just showing where that like wing kind of hits right there. So we'll take that amount right there off. And then the back, you're going to carve all this off. So I just kind of drew that on so you can see it. But yeah, that's the gist of it. It's pretty simple. So let's get into it. Um, all we're going to need is a knife for this project. You can make it more complicated or easier um, by using, you know, little micro gouges or whatever you want to do. But for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to do it with a knife. That way, if that's all you have and this is your first tutorial you're getting into or whatever, you know, you'll have the tools to do it. This um, block, before we get too much farther, well, I don't have a tape close by but I think this is about an inch and a half wide and probably an inch you know thick um I don't know probably like three and a half four inches long but it doesn't have to be that long you can make it whatever length or width or whatever that you want it to be um because these aren't like measurements or anything it's just like equidistant on both sides with the ears and that's about it everything else is just where you want the wings to kind of hit or whatever so that's up to you you can change that if you want um but yeah so let's get into it so the first thing we're going to do is start with the side profile i think that's one of the easier ways because you kind of start to establish those ears and that is really the most defining characteristic of this piece so you just start on the back if you want Back front, it doesn't really matter. Get the piece off the table so it's not so loud. And there's no like set line or whatever. I kind of do like a little above halfway I guess or halfway as far as this like lower line that I'm creating so but you can do it however you want not a whole lot of rules so The wood I'm carving today is poplar. So if you don't have access to basswood, you can probably find poplar in like your local mills. Um, they probably have some. This is actually some like scrap wood left over from a col or a uh, table I made in college. So I've had this wood a long time. It's just been sitting in my garage. Um, but I really like the way it carves. It carves 
it's a little bit harder than mess wood. The grain's a little more unpredictable sometimes, but it's very like satisfying. It has like kind of like I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of like a, almost like a grainy cut. But it's really satisfying and fun to carve. It sounds cool when you're carving. And as you carve, like you'll see that the grain pattern in here, um, I'm guessing this is a fairly nice piece of wood. Um, I haven't ever worked with poplar except for that table I made, um, but it gets really pretty. It has like a nice shine and um, kind of gives you a little bit more options than basswood as far as like doing a natural piece. Basswood, when you finish it naturally, is very boring looking. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. We're just taking the front of the piece back to this to create that ear. And I apologize if I get off camera and, you know, you're looking at my, you know, wrist for a while, but try to keep an eye on the camera and make sure I'm in there. All right, so we just took that back part off, took the front off. Um, now we can start working on the side here. We're going to have to take off some of this through here and then also down here. Take this off and make it easier to hold. Yeah, you can see some of that grain pattern right there. It's it might not be showing up on camera, but it like really catches the light. It's kind of a nice wood to carve. It's definitely not easier to carve than basswood but sometimes easier isn't always better you know sometimes the experience of carving is more important than just the ease of it you know so i don't know just food for thought if you don't want to try basswood i know a lot of people exclusively use basswood and they never really carve anything else totally fine I just had some of this laying around and tried it and I was really glad that I liked, liked carving it but just because I have quite a bit of it left over from that table Oh, and something else, I kind of put two lines here, and the reason for that is you're not going to want to bring this quite to a point um, because you're going to put an eyelet in it. Well, you don't have to, but that's the way I do it. I put an eyelet in the bottom, that way you can hang it, because this bat is made to kind of look like it's hanging off the bottom of a cave, or I guess the roof of the cave, or like the bottom of an eave, like I've got mine. And I use pretty small eyelets, um, just so that, you know, this big piece of metal sticking out, it's kind of ugly. Um, and for that, I actually had to buy a drill bit set, which I don't have handy. Um, but anyways, it's like a really small drill bit set. It's like a hand drill. And I think it was like 10 bucks on Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. And it's been like one of my favorite tools that I use, the supplement carving. But yeah, so kind of get the gist of that. It's just... Bring it down to a point. 
And eventually we're gonna bring all this together and take up this section and this section, that way it's pointy. Um, but we'll get to that. So now we'll just take off this section and you can kind of just go straight across and kind of do like a chip cut essentially. I am horrible at doing these chip cuts across the whole section of wood, and that's why I do one on each side before I try to get these out. But I don't have like the strongest hands, um, so it's kind of hard for me to muscle through some of those longer sections. I see Doug Linker. If you haven't seen his channel, you should go check it out. It's a good channel. Uh, uh, it's better than good. It's a great channel. Um, but. He has a lot of tutorials. You guys can benefit from that. Um, but he, like, he has like big, manly man hands, and uh, you know, I think he calls them paws. He has big paws. Um, but yeah, he can just muscle through this wood. And I'm sure his knives are very sharp, but you know, sometimes I see the way he carves, and I'm like, man, it's nice to just fly through wood like that. So if you don't have that hand strength to be able to just do these huge big cuts and push all the way through, that's one little tip is you can go from one side, kind of weaken it up, and then you just have a smaller section that you have to cut through. So you can kind of see how that's shaping. You're kind of getting that head. And you'll round this off, obviously. And then for the wings, I just bring this one down in like that, and that's about it. For this one, it just kind of wraps around the body, and I bring it to the back corner. You know, we'll bring this to a point, but bring it down to the back corner of it. And then right here where the shoulder comes in, we're going to take this out and bring this in. Um, so just go ahead and do that if we want to. Now we can kind of take this, bring it back. Kind of take off a little bit of each each side and you can change how you want that to look based on you know your preferences you could take off less in the front and have a more dramatic swoop where there's more curve in the back um but that's just up to you you can do it however you want so now it's getting down to that point you got your shoulders here obviously you just round these off a little more all right, so now we still have to do this where the wing comes down. So yeah, just kind of end it at that point. This section right here, and then the ears, which you remember we started kind of like right there, right? So you're just going to come down however far you want. Kind of make yourself a little swoopy head. Sorry, I hit the mic. Um, and then the same thing over here. So, so yeah, so you just make that as symmetrical as you want. You know, symmetry is always nice. You don't have to, though. And you can kind of see from drawing those lines on there how you're going to get that shape and you're going to round more of this off you know, take more material off here and here going into the neck a little more um, and then we also have to cut the jaw or you know the bottom of the mouth and then the eyes we can do as well or you can just paint those on if you want uh, so cutting towards those lines. Got like a little knot or something there. So 
So this is a good place to show you an example of that chip out that can occur. So cutting into this corner from this side, at this angle, you're gonna cut in and you're gonna chip, you're gonna break off this chunk. That might be fine, it might break off just the point of it, which I'm trying to take off anyways, but it's always better to like go with the grain. That way you just avoid any like big issue. Cause I mean, you never know, you could break that much of it off. You know, it might just split weird and take a big chunk off. Taking off kind of that brow line area to kind of round out the front of the face a little more. So basically we're just gonna go in like that. Okay. So you're starting to get your ears and obviously you can make these deeper, you know, pointier, whatever. You don't have to look as rounded off or as shallow or short. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this section out right here. Um, you can do that a couple different ways. You can come in like this and do like a chip cut essentially. Or you can just draw, you know, essentially like carve a line down, do like a stop cut. Um, you could even do like an angled stop cut, just depending on how you want it to look. You are going to want to get fairly deep right here, just so that you can create that like wing look. Um, so it's not, you don't have to do it any which way. If you, you know, see a different way to do it and you think it's better or more comfortable or easier for you, you do that. And I think, I don't know, the other two um, bats I did, I actually used a V-tool for this. I just pushed because it's easier to use V-tools. You don't have to use V-tools. You can do everything with a knife. Um, but sometimes it's just a lot easier to do. I think I'm also, or actually better at just doing like little V cuts along this area and then flipping around when I run out of room to do it. Um, then I am at drawing and then doing another cut. Um, some of those chip carpers, the way they can do a cut and then reverse their, you know, grip and cut out a super clean section like that, I just baffles me. I don't know how they do it. So don't feel discouraged if you're not great at it. You're just starting off. You get kind of, you know, maybe not the cleanest looking cuts. Because I've been doing this for years and I still don't have the cleanest looking cuts. Obviously, if you don't rely on a V tool like I have for years to create these types of cuts, you'll get better at them. But there's no right or wrong way. And if you guys ever want to see my, you know, the work I've done over the years since I started to now or whatever, you can find me on Instagram um, at the same name, Halfling Carvings. That's about it on that. I mean, obviously, making this not so blocky, you know, maybe deepening this cut. You don't have to, though. I mean, it looks fine. Um, just rounding off everything, kind of cleaning up making everything a little more gradual and just look better. Um, but I'm not gonna bring you down that rabbit hole because I could fiddle with this for hours um, doing that kind of stuff. But you just take off these corners, you know, that kind of thing. Make it look how you want it to look. and look a little more smooth or, you know, less blocky. You know, take off these edges, take off your, this grain or whatever, make it towards not flat. Um, take off the saw marks. I actually didn't take off the saw marks enough on my other two that I made for my house that are hanging out front. And you can actually see them 
in there and I kind of regret not going through and at least just taking, even if I were to keep this flat, just taking off that top layer so you don't see those saw marks. And then the eyes, you can paint those on. You can paint them on. You don't have to do eyes. You could just do like a, you know, paint it all black and just hang it upside down. And it's like an outdoor thing. You know, from the street, most people aren't going to be able to see the eyes anyways. Um, unless you make a bigger one. Um, but even if you don't, you know, your bat could be sleeping. As it's supposed to be if it's upside down. Um, so, it doesn't have to have eyes. Um, you can paint those on. Or you can just come through here and, you know, cut a little circle. I'm not very good at that, but... And then cut into it. I actually used on the other one. I used a gouge to do this kind of stuff. Like a number nine, or number eight, or something. I can't remember. So you kind of see how I'm creating that ball, right? And right now it's just a circle and you just create that relief around it. And the one tip I will say is that if you are doing this, try not to take, like draw your other circle and try not to take the material out right here while you're carving in. Otherwise your eyes are gonna be at different depths and they're gonna look weird. Um, if you want to do that intentionally, have like one eye popping out at you, like one big eye or a small eye, um, you can do that. It could look cool, especially on a bigger piece. But And then you just kind of go at an angle like this, kind of make it more rounded. And it'll be kind of hard to see, you know, until you get it painted. But I'm actually just going to paint the eyes on this one, so I'm going to take this off in a minute. But just kind of showing you how you do it. So you just kind of, you know, cut those off. And it doesn't have to be a real drastic, crazy eye to pop off. Because if you're painting it, it'll you'll see it. But yeah, so... Like I said, I'm horrible at this, so if I were using a V-tool and carving a circle, you know, gouge or whatever, something like that, um, it'll be a lot easier. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see right there how it's starting to pop up. And then you can just round all this off. That's basically how that, you do that, or you can just cut it off like I'm going to. You know, I'll bring the forehead back a little more. Make it a little more pointy of an ear. Yeah, so you can basically just do that. You can still see where I cut in there, but that's fine. Um, you can paint some eyes on. You can just leave them black. Probably just leave this one black after I get it cleaned up. Um, you can smooth this out. You can go through and cut big facets, you know, off. That kind of thing make it like a more of a flat plane carving where you have these big facets popping off kind of make it kind of look like a gem like a diamond or whatever gemstone where it has all those sections of planes that could look cool you could do a lot of different things um yeah so that's about it i mean it's, it's not a super complicated carving um, I'll throw up some pictures, maybe here at the end, um, or maybe at the beginning, I don't know. We'll, we'll throw up some pictures somewhere of the ones I've already done, and I will be bringing more tutorials, and, you know, I might do some more, you know, tool reviews, or how to, sh you know, sharpen your knife, um, you know, how to keep it sharp. Um, but yeah, so, but definitely going to bring some more tutorials. Um, that seems to be the thing that most people want to see and 
yeah so that's what i'm gonna show you um i might do some like little silly mushrooms or something um this was one i was just goofing off on the other day kind of little mushroom might do like a s'more this little s'more guy i was working on that's based on a friend of mine she made a little magnet for our fridge so i was making one that was out of wood um yeah so a couple different projects i'm gonna do some christmas and winter themed stuff here pretty soon so that people can get a head start on that um but yeah so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time